And as I record this, I just made somebody else rage quit, cry, and moan because King Calamity should be banned. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's your host with the most, Avery LR32 year. We have become the purely king when we played purely sprite. And now we are the Centurion Prince, the Centurion Ruler. I'm not, I'm not sure. Let me know down in the comments below. What should we give ourselves for a nickname for this? But ladies and gentlemen, be sure to smash the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that King Calamity like and subscribe button as we climb even higher the 1300 ladder. King Calamity is a busted card, ladies and gentlemen, but it's not a 100% win rate card, I will be honest with you. But this is the Centurion deck with some changes that I've made. If you saw my video yesterday where I talked about how I finally broke Centurion. So I want to kind of go in depth here and talk about things that I've messed around with and seen online. Trying to make this godforsaken deck work. Because in that video I made the other day talking about how like hand traps need to be hit and how I was raging about Centurion like not being a good deck. The point that I was trying to make in that video that I feel like I actually got across pretty well is the fact that all of these decks that come out of these deck build packs usually are just not on par with all the other meta decks that are solid that have solidified themselves in the room because of the fact that they just don't have as much support behind them because they are brand new. So they lose to like a well-timed, like one piece of a hand trap ash. They just fart on you with any hand trap in the game and you lose. Like it could be, what's that old one? Gemini Imps that people used to use in Dark World. Doesn't do anything to this deck and they'll just play it on me and I'll lose because it's just called a hand trap. <laughs> so I started tweaking with things, and then I thought, let's try the horse cards, because that can insulate you from hand traps. The horse monsters don't start a chain when they're summoned. They're just inherent summons, and that did work for a time. However, that did get you open to being able to be Nibiru'd, and the whole gimmick with Centurion, whether people want to like it or not, but I love it because people get salty, and I put all of their salty tears into my cup of coffee that helps me take a dump in the morning. <laughs> Enjoy that image. Um, and I just drink it up because King Calamity is the way to go with this deck. For better or for worse, you are able to get to a Legadia within four summons on your turn. And then on the next turn, you use Trudea and Primera, summon them from the back row with the stand-up Centurion on the board. You go into Crimson Dragon, and as long as the Crimson Dragon is Chainlink 1 targeting the Legadia, you're guaranteed to get yourself a King Calamity and just win the ballgame. Now, keep in mind with King Calamity, it says that effects that activate on the field are negated. So if the opponent has effects that activate in the Banish Zone, Graveyard, Deck, Hand, whatever, those are all still fair game. And I feel like a lot of people forget about that. They just think King Calamity and think, oh, I can't activate any effects I lose. But no, it's just for on-field stuff. So if you're playing Unchained and you have a way to destroy your monsters or even just your cards in general without activating an effect on the field, you can still kind of play the game. And again, that's really something to keep in mind because unless like you're the Centurion player and you have like Valor or, you know, Ghost Mortar, Imperm, whatever in your hand to like stop effects or like have the Imperm set on the field to stop monster effects, um, you know, before you get the King Calamity, uh, you're going to have a hard time stopping all their effects, you know? Like, TC Boo's good, but it's not good against everything. It's just good against, you know, several meta decks in the room. But, you know, there's always that one deck that maybe just doesn't necessarily auto-lose to TC Boo. But a King Calamity backed up with a TC Boo, I've had that happen several times now, and it's delicious. It's so damn good. Anyway, um, let's go ahead and just dump, jump into dump. Yeah, let's go ahead and take a dump on everybody with this deck profile. Yes, let's let's enjoy that because we are dumping on everybody with this King Calamity. So we're playing uh, two copies of the Emmet Six, three copies of Primera. This is basically a Stratos. Three copies of Trudea to get to your Stratos, and then we're playing we're playing an ass load of hand traps. We're playing three Ash, three Valor, three Imperm, and then three Ghost Mourner and Moonlit Chill. So let's kind of talk about these here. So we tried the Horus engine and it ended up being kind of bricky. I tried the Naturia version and it just seemed really clunky. There was some interesting stuff that you could do with Dogmatica cards, right? Because you can do stuff like activate Nadir Servant. You can dump uh, Lulu Walleth. And then since Lulu Walleth was sent to the graveyard this turn, you can activate its effect to summon a spellcaster whose attack equals its own defense. So that actually gets you to Primera because it's a fucking spellcaster with 1600 attack and defense for whatever reason. Um, so it gets you to that. You can search. And then if you have like the stand-up Centurion on board, 
then that can lead you into a Legadia uh, or Crimson Dragon, depending on how your board state is and going from there. Problem is that Nadir Servant locks you out of the extra deck for the rest of the turn. So it just showed, it proved to be kind of clunky. So then I was like, you know what, screw it. We don't have as much of archetype in archetype in-house engines as like Unchained and all these other decks. Let's just throw in a bunch of non-engine. And that's exactly what I did. Because the Centurion engine, when you think about it, is really just one to two of these, depending on your deck. But we'll just say maximum worst case scenario. You're playing two, so three, six, seven, eight. Uh, you're playing nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, possibly a one of for the uh, Phalanx, but we'll just say 16, 17, 18. So you're playing 18 engine-based cards in this deck. You have, what is that, like 20 plus non-engine slots, at least like 23 to 24 at that point, possibly 25 if you want to play like a 41, 42 card deck somewhere around that ballpark of non-engine stuff that you can play. So it's like, why wouldn't you play these cards? Because at the end of the day, King Calamity should not be your go-to thing. If you're going first, uh, then yeah, King Calamity should be your go-to. But if you're going second, King Calamity isn't necessarily going to be the thing that you want to go for. So why not have a bunch of hand traps to at least have some sort of backup plan where if you go first and like, let's say you only open up Primera as your playable card, you summon the Primera, it gets, let's say, Impermed Ash, whatever, and you don't have like talents or something to keep the gas going, then you at least have a couple of hand traps in your hand to keep playing the game. You get the ball game back to your turn. Now, maybe you top deck something like Emblama, you top deck Stand Up Centurion, get to your Legadia. Once you get to the Legadia, the King Calamity is all but guaranteed for the next turn. It's, it's so good. It's absolutely insane. Um, also, let's talk about the effects here real quick. Trudea, uh, during your main phase, you can place this card to control and a Centurion monster from your hand to deck except itself in your back row as a face-up continuous trap. Also, uh, you can't special summon Trudea for the rest of this turn. During the main phase of this card, it's a continuous trap. You can special summon this card, then increase its level by four. So this is an eight. This is level four tuner. This can become an eight. So you're doing a lot of level 12 synchro shenanigans, and you could potentially do level eights because you can leave this as a four and then do four and four and eight, or do rank four shenanigans and like Dweller or Boguska. I feel like these are just the two best rank fours in the game next to something like Cowboy if you're trying to go for game. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the spells. We're playing three copies of Talents. I thought about like double talents and a thrust, but there's nothing good to really thrust for in this deck. Like if you're going first, you're going to thrust into like an imperm or a phalanx, but you're playing desires. So if you hit your one of thrust, you're kind of just pooping all over yourself, all in your big old pants as you're trying to drop a king calamity. Uh, then we're playing two copies of desires, one terraforming, one uh, centurion bonds, one call by, three emblama. The fact that this is not a centurion card really sucks. We got three stand-up, uh, we already mentioned the three infirm, three TC Boo, and then three Centurion Phalanx. I love this card, I don't know if I'm going to play it at three. This is kind of up in the air, but with us playing Desires, I don't want to just be playing a one of Phalanx, and then like trying to hopefully not banish it. But its effect is insane. You target a face-up monster card on the field, banish it, and if you do during the standby phase of the next turn, special summon that banished monster to its owner's field. So that means if you banish an opponent's monster, when it comes back, you can choose whether or not to summon it in attack or defense. You can banish this card from your graveyard, then target one Centurion Synchro Monster in your graveyard, special summon it, but it loses 1,500 attack. You can only use one Phalanx to perfect per turn only once that turn. This card's busted. You know why? Legadia says, your monsters with 2,000 or less attack cannot be shown by battle. You decrease this thing by 1,500 and now has 2,000 attack and defense. You summon it in defense mode. It can't be shown by battle. Primera's effect is that whenever it's treated as a continuous trap, your level 5 or higher Centurion monster you control can't be shown by card effects. So this in the back row plus this on the field summoned off of the Phalanx, this thing can't be destroyed in battle by card effects. And on top of that, when it's special summon, not synchro summon, special summon, you get to draw a card and then pop a monster the opponent controls with the highest attack, your choice of tide. That doesn't target. Then, during each player's end phase, you can place one non-synchro Centurion monster from your hand uh, from your hand or graveyard face up in your spell and trap zone as a face-up continuous trap. So every turn, you can recur like Primera, Trudea, and go from there. Once you get to Primera and Trudea, like I said, you just activate these during the opponent's main phase. The stand-up Centurion will trigger. You'll be able to go for the Crimson Dragon and go for King Calamity. Or, like, if you're on, like, turn three, sometimes I just go for Red Supernova Dragon or Cosmic Blazar. They've actually come up, and it's really funny. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm still kind of losing my voice. Um, let's go ahead and move on to the extra deck. We're playing one Little Knight because it's good. Uh, one Lina because you have several different attributes. This is an Earth. This is a Light. This is a Dark. 
So it gives you gas in order to like climb up an access code. One dark, same reason. Celine, this is a spellcaster. These are spellcasters, so you're not really worried. <coughs> you can also use this effect to summon out Primera and get a search. And then since it's a link three, you can climb an access code. Uh, one Dweller, one Baguska, one Sky Crisis, because it's a god card. One Crimson Dragon, because I like winning games with King Calamity. One Final Sigma, because it's a generic level 12 synchro. This, this extra deck, this deck in general... <coughs> Excuse me, guys. I'm sorry. I'm losing my voice. I feel like I deep-throated a cactus. Um, <laughs> this deck has so much extra deck flexibility that a lot of this stuff could be whatever you want. Like, in all honesty, the only cards that you have to play, if you think about it, are like uh, all of this. The Cosmic Blazar over to the Sky Crisis. So you've got, in theory, three, four, five, six, seven cards of flex spots that you could play in the extra deck. That's what's so insane about this deck, ladies and gentlemen. You have you have flex spots everywhere, like you're on a diet and you're thin. Like, Lord have mercy, this is the skinniest extra deck I've ever played. Uh, two Legadia, one red Supernova Dragon for OTK, King Calamity, because I like winning, and then one Cosmic Blazar, because it's honestly just a power crep version of shooting Quasar. Like, this thing's a solemn judgment on legs, which is insane. <coughs> If you watched uh, the replays yesterday, I think I showed off in one of the replays in that video where like I had Cosmic Blazar, King Calamity, and Red Supernova Dragon on the field because I couldn't get around a Chaos Angel until I hit the Imperm. So I was playing Underworld Goddess to get around that, but then I went back to Access Code um, just because of the fact that Access Code's a really good card. Um, yeah, there's not really much else reason for that, but it could be Underworld Goddess if you choose to. You could take out the Selene and, uh, you know, throw in a... Mask Arena to get the access code for Underworld Goddess. You know, there, there's a lot of different ways that you could go about this. <clears throat> the side deck is not done by any means. Um, something I was just thinking of before I started recording is that you could side deck things like Droll and Nib to have different different hand traps to go into. Because the reason why we're playing the hand traps that we are is because things like Nib and Droll aren't good in the mirror match. This deck does not care about Nib because we're establishing a Legadia by summon number four, and we don't care about Droll because we really don't search that much. You're denying me a draw off of the Legadia, and if I'm going first, I don't care because I'm going for King Calamity anyway. So, you, you know, it, it just doesn't matter. But if we can side deck things like Droll and Nib, it gives us more... Uh, flexibility and adaptability with our hand traps. Like, if we don't need Moonlit Chill, we could take out the Moonlit Chills for Droll. I can't tell you how many times I've dropped Droll on somebody and they just lose because it's a Droll. Like, I literally had a dude tell me I'm a Droll and Lock bitch because I drolled and locked him two turns in a row because I opened up two of them. Like, it is what it is. So, but for the side deck right now, we're playing three Fenrir, one Drew Swarm, one Magnum, double Lightning Storm, Feather Duster, three evenly with the Truth Centurion. Um, Centurion, True Awakening. I mean, you said this card's really good going first. It's an Inferno Barrier. And then three Cross Out because we're playing so many hand traps. If you know you're going first, you want to get to the King Calamity and just win. So, guys, this is what I'm working on right now. Um, like I said, the side deck still needs some work. The extra deck is very flexible, very adaptable depending on the format. But, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Let me know of any questions you may have. Let me know how we can make this better. And yeah, this deck is hella fun. I know it's just a King Calamity spam deck, but people get salty. People say I'm cringe and I don't care because I'm winning. And if it gets us our invite, it gets us our invite. Who cares what people say? Or if it gets you a top eight at a regional, get you a top eight at a regional. So guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.